Welcome to What's Cooking. I'm Rebecca Fleiser, the dietitian with the Heart's Feedback Heart of the Wall Project, working to reduce and eventually eliminate heart attacks in your area. All right, so tonight we have a great guest with us. Natalie Kirtling is here, and tell us a little bit about your recipe and what you're going to be making for us tonight. Well, tonight I'll be making a cinnamon chili chicken with apple salsa. Great. And it's I'm using chicken breast in combination with some fruits and vegetables to create a variety of ingredients to create a well-rounded recipe. Great. Now if you take a look at Natalie's ingredient list here, you're going to find many of our fruits and vegetables can be found at the farmer's market. So if you shop locally, you're going to have the best flavor, you're going to support your local economy, and it's going to be easy for you to make. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what is all part of your recipe here. Okay, so first, um, we're going to do a marinade first to marinate the chicken, and then we're going to use olive oil, and then we're going to use some minced garlic, uh, chili powder, ground cinnamon, and chicken breast, and pepper, and that's going to be our marinade. That sounds great. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so first I'm going to start by trimming the fat off of the chicken. That'll make sure that it's the leanest cut possible off of the chicken. Right. And remember, our chicken is taking the place of our protein. We'll be filling that role tonight. This is one of our lean protein sources. That's exactly what we're looking for. It's going to be lower in cholesterol than many of our other choices of meat. We want to make sure, if following the Mediterranean diet, we have our poultry just two to three times per week. When speaking of the Mediterranean diet, we encourage you to use nuts and legumes as your protein source. One and a half, one half to one ounce per serving is ideal for our nuts. But you can use these lean protein sources a couple times per week, and this is going to fit in this recipe nicely. So Natalie, why don't you tell us a little bit about what brings you to the cooking show tonight and where you came up with your recipe. Okay, well, I'm actually an intern for the Heart and Wall Project. I am a student at MSU Mankato. I am a dietetic student, and I'm doing my undergrad internship for now. Um, I got this recipe from a friend at work, actually, and we just made a couple of modifications right. to make it a little more heart healthy. Good. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that's, I trimmed our chicken. So now we can just put them in the pan, and this is what we're going to marinate them in. Okay, so now I need three tablespoons of olive oil. Remember, our olive oil is our good fat source. It's going to be high in those poly and monounsaturated fats. These are going to actually help bring up your HDLs or your good cholesterol and bring down your bad. So this is a great choice for an, olive, uh, an oil to add to this dish. Okay. That's going to keep it from sticking on the bottom. It's going to give it a little bit of flavor, and it's also going to help spices and herbs adhere to the meat. So help them sink in a little bit. If you want to regulate your si your portion size on oil, so even though it has those good fats, it's still very high in calories, and so that's why we regulate our portion size. Remember garlic again is one of our good heart healthy uh, spices. It helps increase our antioxidants and really is great flavor. So if you like garlic, we encourage you to use it as often as possible. Throw a little extra in there. We don't have to regulate the portion size on that at all. It really has no calories to speak of and has great flavor. Next I'm going to use one tablespoon of chili powder. Again, our chili powder is going to add a little kick. Many people like to kind of tone that down. If you like it a little more spicy, you can use things like fresh red pepper or something a little more spicy in this as well. This is just going to be a mild flavor. It's going to be good for your entire family. Now I'm going to use ground cinnamon and just add a little touch of that over the top. A little dusting. And then pepper to taste. Now if you look at the original recipe, this did call for some salt. But because we are finding a little bit of natural salt in some of the foods that have been chosen, we have chosen to take that out of the recipe. This makes sure it follows our heart healthy principles. You know, we look for less than 600 to 700 milligrams per meal in our overall sodium intake. So taking that out of this recipe is going to really change our flavor, but it's going to make it much better for those of you that have issues with blood pressure, fluid retention, or other cardiac conditions that uh, limit your salt intake. Okay, 
Now we're going to set this aside to let marinate for about 15 to 30 minutes. I like to just let it set aside while I prepare my salsa that's going to go over the top. Now because we just prepared chicken on our cutting board, we like to start with a fresh cutting board we're gonna, these are, and we're going to flip this so we have a clean cutting surface. We also have a bucket here with some leach water. We want to make sure we get our hands washed and keep all the chicken, raw chicken product off of our hands. Again, that's a cross-contamination that we're trying to avoid. If we use a, even though these are being baked, we still like to practice good, clean cooking. And, uh, you know, it's just something that we like to do. If this was a fresh salad, it'd be critical. Uh, but these are going to be put on the raw chicken, so maybe not as important, but it's a good habit to be into. All right, so let's keep moving forward. Okay. So, Natalie, tell us a little bit about while you're dicing these apples, uh, about what areas of dietetics you're looking at and what you'd like to learn from your internship. Well, I like, I'm doing a community internship with the Heart and Long, and that is community based. So, that's part that I'm most interested in. And there are other aspects of the dietitian world. However, I just like to work with the public a little more. I like interaction and I like to teach people new things. And that's the best way to get that. And it can be fun at the New Alm Farmer's Market three days a week, Mondays from 4 to 7, Thursdays from 2.30 to 5.30, and Saturday mornings from 9 to 11. We offer different cooking demonstrations at the market. And you can visit with both of our interns. We have Natalie as well as Holly Sanders available to answer your questions and help you navigate the farmer's market. So these are actually a Fuji apple. They're going to have some nice flavor. They're good for baking. They're going to stay firm. A good choice for this recipe. Yeah, they are very crisp, crisp and sweet. You know, you could add something like a honey crisp later in the season. Even though they're a little more expensive, now that's a great flavor in an apple. That's definitely my favorite apple. Great tasting. Yeah, I like those too. As we go through the seasons, we try to incorporate different fruits and vegetables that are going to be available. You might have noticed in the last couple weeks we've used quite a few apples. We are starting to see these become available. The peppers too may be coming up in your own garden and a good way to incorporate those into different recipes. This recipe also would go great with a nice lean pork cut, uh, so feel free to change that up if you'd like. Now, because we only use two chicken breasts, the recipe calls for as much as four to six chicken breasts. You won't have to dice the entire apple or use this. We're going to make this to portional for what we need tonight. You know, this is a nice tip for you at home as well. If you're cooking for one or only two people, maybe you want to half this recipe as well, and it still is going to have great taste, and you won't have quite as much left over. Okay. Transfer that to the bowl. We're going to mix the salsa in. Okay. So next we're going to do the red pepper. I actually just learned a new way to cut a red pepper in Chef Topher's cooking classes at the New Alm Chef Pantry. These cooking classes are available free to anyone who would like to attend. We do have a limited number of uh, places, so if you'd like to sign up, those are available on the Heart of New Alm website at heartsbeatback.org. Chef Topher Jacobson offers free cooking classes to give you the basics in the kitchen and also will take some advancing skills. So. Uh, you know, you can really learn a lot, get your basics covered, and then go on to a new level. It's a great benefit that we have a master chef willing to work with us, teach our community how to use these fruits and vegetables coming out of the garden. And, you know, he does a great job, and they're a lot of fun. And you do get a lot of good samples, so yeah. you got to come hungry. Yeah, it's true. A red pepper is going to be a little bit, has a little bit of kick to it. You know, when you try the different peppers, your green, yellow, orange, they're all going to have a little bit of a different flavor. So you can experiment with that a little bit. You don't have to stay with red for this recipe. Uh, you can change it up to your taste. If you're not a big pepper fan, you can cut that back a little bit if you'd like. And if you really like it, you can always add a little bit more. Now, there's kind of a different ingredient to this recipe that you wouldn't expect in a salsa. And that's going to be next. And what's that? We're going to use... Oh, okay. We're using pear tonight. That's gonna give kind of like a sweet and spicy type of salsa. Now this recipe originally called for mango, something that's not grown around here very often or not at all. 
and is a little bit more expensive, so we decided to make a little bit of a change to this recipe. You know, all recipes can be easily modified to accommodate for budget and availability. So you, know, you just need to experiment with what you have, and that'll make a difference in your recipes as well. Being budget friendly is probably the most important thing when choosing your recipes, because all of us are watching our dollars. Here's our on sale right now. It's a great option for this recipe. I like this recipe too because it's easy to put together. All we do, um, all we're doing is chopping and cutting, nicely. And then this is going to get thrown in the oven. So what do you think is your prep time? And then with your bake time, what's your total recipe time? Um, with the cook time, maybe 45 minutes, 15 minutes to get all everything together, chopped up, and then half hour to cook. Also available for other initiatives. We have our Swap It to Drop It campaign encouraging you to reduce your total calorie intake for the day by just 100 calories. Over the course of a year, that's going to yield 10 pound weight loss. So, um, you know, you can go onto our website to find out more information about that. We have a lot of different programs within our community and expanding into our county and soon to affect your community as well. Looking at our restaurants, our convenience stores, grocery stores, all opportunities for us to improve our overall health. You know, the state of Minnesota is a little bit high in our obesity rate. National average is about 66% of us are either overweight or obese. The Heart of New Orleans is working to reduce that number in the state of Minnesota, and we'd like to be a community health leader. Find out more about the project at heartsfeedback.org. So next we have your... I am getting the cilantro ready. Yeah, so Chef Topher actually taught me how to do this too, all right? Took a lap in these cooking glasses. Yes, it's okay. very good. It's very good observing. You know, cilantro is kind of a love-hate food. So either you love it or you don't. So or you yeah. hate it. So make sure that you know your family well. Make sure you're incorporating foods that they'll enjoy. Healthy eating doesn't have to taste bad, but we do want to be careful about what foods we're offering. Uh, once somebody gets something that's healthy and doesn't taste good, you can really turn them off to future right. recipes. And we don't need very much. We only need a fourth of a cup. So I'll just sprinkle some of that in. Yeah, it looks like some really nice color coming to it. Right. That's what I like about this recipe, too. It incorporates all the different colors. All right. And then we're going to do one fourth cup of red onion. Now, the red onion is again going to have a little bit of a different flavor. Not quite so strong as some of our other onions. Right now, the Vidalia or the 1012 onions are in season. If you'd like to try those, they're very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a great great onion to incorporate into your recipes as well. So uh, look for those in your groceries as well. Next I'm going to add some honey. This is going to add a little more, more sweetness. About one tablespoon. So I'm just going to add all it. That's good. And then some more black pepper. this recipe as well. Things like chives could be added in here, maybe a small amount of basil. We do have the cinnamon that you're adding now. That's just going to accentuate the flavor of the marinade. And once again, you'll be using the and chili powder. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Just going to mix this up. Other things that could be put in here would be a jalapeno pepper if you wanted to add some kick, or if you really like it hot, you can add in a habanero. There's really nothing that restricts what you can do. This is going to be your base, and you can really modify from here. So you're going to see with the pears or the mango, you're going to have a nice fruit flavor to this and apples, but you can really uh, dice this up and jazz it up any way you like. So, all right, all right, okay. Next, I'm just going to pour that right over the chicken breast. It smells great too. It does. All the different flavors are accentuating each other. That's awesome. All right. So this is ready for the oven. It is. Perfect. Okay. Now this could be served over a nice bed of rice. You could be using couscous.
couscous, maybe um, a quinoa, anything that you'd like on here to add as your carbohydrate. If you'd like to have it just this way by itself, that's going to work as well. We do have the apples and the fruits in there for our carbohydrate. Our fats are covered through the oils, and of course our protein is again the chicken. So definitely a complete meal. Looks like it's going to be very filling, and it's going to really taste great. So I definitely like it. We'll get this in the oven. And we'll be right back with what's cooking. Alright, so that's it for this week's episode of What's Cooking. If you enjoy these recipes, please be sure to visit our website at heartsfeedback.org. All recipes will be listed, previous episodes can be reviewed, and you can learn more about our project. If you're interested in being part of the Heart of New Orleans project, give us a call and we'll be sure to give you a good explanation of how you can become involved and improve your overall heart health. Natalie, thanks so much for being here. Good luck in your internship. And that's it for this week's episode. We'll see you next week.